Okay, in this video we're going to look at the nth term test for divergence. And this is the rule right here. We'll come back to this in just a second. But before we start on the rule, let's take a quick look at just a sample problem to show uh, where you would use this thing. And the problem looks like something like this. So the idea is that you will be given a series and you're going to be asked, does the series converge or diverge? Now later on you're going to get several tests for convergence. Uh, but in a lot of problems, it's actually quicker to do this. Rather than testing for convergence, test for divergence, because if you can show quickly that the series diverges, then you don't even need to run any of the convergence tests. So a sample problem would look like this. Now let's go back to the rule and see what the rule actually says. So it reads like this, and it kind of starts over here and says, if you have a series, now this would be the series right here, and you want to know, does this series diverge? Well, what the rule says is that the series diverges. The only way that the series can diverge is if the limit of the terms of the sequence that make up that series approach anything but zero. Now, it sounds a little bit confusing at first, but let's take a graphical look, and it'll give you a little bit better feel for what it actually says here. So the idea is you're given this series, and to find out whether the series diverges, you actually work with the sequence that makes up the series. And you want to find the limit of that sequence. Now let's just go ahead and we'll plot a couple of <coughs> uh, sample ones here to show you some cases. So suppose we had a, se a sequence that looks like this. And I'm just going to put a few dots and suppose the dots did this. And I'm going to have them come down and suppose they actually approached uh, this line right here. Now this means that they're approaching one. So the sequence of blue dots is getting closer and closer and closer to 1. And what that means then is that the limit of this sequence as n goes off to infinity, it's equal to 1, which is to say that it's not equal to 0. So if you've got a sequence and it seems to be leveling off at a certain limit and it's not approaching 0, then you can conclude, and we'll put it over here, you can conclude that the series diverges. So again, if the terms of the sequence are not approaching 0, in this case they're approaching a constant 1, well 1 is not 0, so it satisfies this condition and um, you know that the resulting series diverges. <clears throat> Let's talk about one more again. Suppose we had one. This one leveled off at 1, so the limit existed and it was 1, but you might have one that does that. Suppose it started right here and the dots did this. We'll use blue dots again, a little bit bigger. Suppose that the sequence seems to be taking off toward uh, infinity. Then in that case, the limit to the sequence does not exist. So whether it settles on a fixed number or whether it goes way up to infinity, um, in either case, the limit does not approach, whatever it's doing, it's not approaching zero, and this thing diverges. So if your sequence happens to look like this, then the series diverges. If your sequence looks like this, the series diverges. So now what would it look like <coughs> if it did approach zero? So let's put one more series. We'll put this one up here, I think, in red. And let's suppose it did this. It went down like this, and like this, and like this. And this time, these red dots are approaching the x-axis. So they're getting closer and closer and closer to zero. Now what that means would be this. That means that the limit of this sequence as n approaches infinity, rather than not being equal to zero, in this case it would be equal to zero. So the red dots represent a case where the sequence, the limit of the sequence, the terms of the sequence are approaching zero. Now in that case, what you've got is, uh, the best you can do is this. If the terms of the sequence are not approaching zero, you can conclude that the series diverges. But if the terms of the sequence are approaching zero, all you can do is just say that the test fails. So the test for divergence failed. And therefore, you must try another test. So try another test. So again, just run through this one more time. Uh, if the limit of the sequence does not equal to zero, you're guaranteed that it diverges. Now, it's tempting to think, but it's wrong. If the limit 
of a sequence does equal to zero, that does not guarantee that it converges. All that guarantees, and we'll kind of put some arrows like this now. Uh, so if the limit of the sequence is equal to zero, that just means that the uh, test for divergence fails. You have to try another test. Okay, so with those in mind, uh, let's go up and look at a couple problems now. And in the first problem, we'll do this. Uh, now again, here's a series, and I would like to know uh, if it diverges. All I'm going to do is test for divergence. So to test for divergence, let's go back to the rule, I'll find this part right here. If I can show that the limit of the sequence is not equal to zero, then I will prove that this thing diverges. So the question is this, is the limit of a sub n as n approaches infinity, is this thing anything but zero? And you kind of put a little question mark here. That's what you're trying to show. So if the limit turns out to be anything but from zero, then you show that it diverges. So to do that, let's just go ahead and do it right here. We'll find the limit as n approaches infinity of this sequence. So it'll be 2n squared plus 1 over 3n squared plus 4. Now at this point, it just becomes a limit problem. So to find this, and I think I'll just, we'll just use our limit rules. Now notice you've got a polynomial divided by a polynomial. The power in the top, the biggest power in the top, is the same as the biggest power in the bottom. And if you remember your limit rules, that means that the limit is the ratio of the coefficient in front of those terms. So this will turn out to be 2 thirds. Now, from a practical point of view, what that means is that that is not equal to zero. So you showed this. You showed that the limit of the sequence as n approaches infinity is not equal to zero. Therefore, this original series diverges. And that's all you want to show. So now that it's diverged, you know that it diverges, you're done, and you don't have to move forward with any of the uh, convergence tests. So the idea, again, going back to the the rule is if you're given a series and you want to show that it diverges, find the limit of the sequence that makes up that series. If it turns out to be anything other than a zero, you've proved that it diverges. Now, if it should happen to be zero, then the test would fail and you'll try another one, and we'll see those in a couple more examples. But in this case, uh, I took the limit of the sequence. It turned out to be two-thirds, which is not zero. Therefore, the limit of the sequence uh, does not approach zero, and the original series diverges. So let's take a look at another example. Now the only difference in this next example, in this example the numerator was 2n squared plus 1. In the next example it will be 2n plus 1. And other than that they'll be exactly the same problem. So again we've gotten rid of the squared right here. Okay, now we'll still do the same thing. The very first step I always like to put is I'm just curious about if I take the limit as n approaches infinity. Um, is the last term of the sequence approaching anything but zero? And I'll just put a little question mark. That's what I'm trying to show. So now, uh, again, to do that, find the limit of the sequence that makes up that series, which would be the limit as n approaches infinity of 2n plus 1 over 3n squared plus Again, this just basically turns into a limit problem. And the way this one works, if you remember the limit rules, <clears throat> polynomial on top, polynomial on the bottom. The power of the highest term in the bottom is bigger than the power of the highest term in the top. Therefore, the bottom will always be significantly larger to the top as you go off to infinity. And therefore, the entire thing will go to zero. So in this case, I've showed that the limit is equal to zero. Now, what that says is, let's go back and look at the rule again. It says, if it was not zero, you will have proved that it diverges. But, and you can kind of look down at this one, if it is equal to zero, all that says is that the test fails, you have to try another test. So in our case, we showed that the limit is equal to zero. And so what this means is that the limit of a sub n, um, as n approaches infinity, so the limit of the sequence, in this case, is equal to zero. And what that means is that the test fails 
and therefore you must try another test. So now you'll switch to one of your convergence tests and try it to show that it converged. So try another test. So if the if the limit to the sequence is not equal to zero, you're guaranteed it diverges. But if the limit to the sequence is equal to zero, maybe it converges, maybe it diverges, you're still not sure you have to try another test. So that was a couple of examples on polynomials. Let's try one more. And this next one will involve factorials, but it's still going to be exactly the same process. So again, what I'd like to know is I want to find does the limit of the sequence that makes up this uh, series um, as n approaches infinity, do the terms of that sequence uh, approach zero or not? So I'm trying to show that. Again, I'll find the limit as n approaches infinity of uh, n plus 1 factorial divided by um, n minus 1 factorial. Now this really just comes down to whether you remember your factorial rules and limits or not, so let's do it like this. Uh, the limit as n approaches infinity, and by the way, for what I'm about to do, if you've forgotten the factorial rules, there's another video on finding limits with factorials, and I would suggest that you go ahead and watch that. Uh, but we'll write this down as something kind of like this. Uh, so in the numerator, I'm going to expand it, and I'll write it you know, n plus 1 factorial. The first term is n plus 1. The second term, take away 1, would be n. The third term would be n minus 1, take away another 1. The next term would be n minus 2, and it would go on forever. <clears throat> now in the denominator, I'll do the same thing. I'll expand it. It would be, the first term would be n minus 1. The second term would be n minus 2, and then it would go on. Uh, like that. Now at this point, you can simplify. Now that you've got it expanded, what you've got is n minus 1, n minus 2, all these terms in the top are exactly canceled out by all these terms in the bottom. So what's left over would be uh, the limit as n approaches infinity. And you just have these two terms right here. So if you distributed that, that would be n squared plus n. Now if you found the limit of this, uh, again, the dominant term is n squared. As n gets bigger, n squared get bigger. This entire thing would go off to uh, infinity. So this is all going to approach infinity. Now, <clears throat> infinity, the question was, is this limit approaching anything but zero? And yes, infinity is not equal to zero. So what you've showed <clears throat> is that the limit of the sequence as n approaches infinity is not equal to zero. So it approached infinity, which was not zero. So this is true, and therefore, since that limit is not equal to zero, then the series diverges, and you'd be done. So this one is going to diverge. Uh, so that's an example with uh, factorials. And just to show some variation, then one more, let's do one more with L'Hopital's rule. I uh, just show you some variations on finding the limits. Okay, now a problem like this, uh, again, the first step, my, I'm just going to try to find out, uh, does it or does it not diverge? So we'll start exactly as we did before. The limit of, I want to know, does the limit of the sequence as n approaches infinity, uh, is this thing not equal to zero? And again, back to the rule, that is this part right here. You're just trying to show whether it's equal to zero or not equal to zero. Okay, so that gives you two. Now, in the same process, we'll find the limit as n approaches infinity of the numerator, which is 3n plus 4, divided by 5 raised to the n power. <clears throat> now, the problem here, if you take the limit uh, as n approaches infinity, you would have the numerator is going to go to infinity and the denominator is going to go to infinity. So you'll have infinity divided by infinity, uh, which is a perfect uh, opportunity to use L'Hopital's rule. And you might remember what it says is if you want to find the limit to a numerator going off to infinity and the denominator going off to infinity, take 
find the limit of the derivative of both the numerator and the denominator. So the derivative of 3n plus 1 would be 3, and the derivative of this, now just remember this rule, if you had, let's call it a to the u power. So uh, if, that's, uh, if that was the original function, then the derivative, remember, it's the natural log of the base, times the original function times the derivative of the exponent. So this is just the rule for finding the derivative of a to whatever the whatever power. So what this one's going to be, it's going to be the three-part rule. It'll be the natural log of the base, so the natural log of 5, times the original function times the derivative of the exponent, which would just be a 1. Okay, now what you've got is this. Now, if you try to take the limit now, let n go to infinity. The numerator is a constant at 3. Natural log of 5 is a constant. But 5 raised to the n power, this term right here is going to go way off to infinity. So you'd have 3 divided by an extremely large number. The whole thing is going to go to 0. Now, what that means is that you've showed that the, and we'll put it right over here, you showed that the limit of a sub n as n approaches infinity is 0. Again, back to our things again. If the limit is not equal to 0, you've proved that it diverges. But if the limit is equal to 0, then the test fails. You have to try another test. So in this case, you would conclude that the uh, test for divergence failed. So the test failed. And try another test. So we'll put another test here. And then just move on to one of your convergence tests and see what that does. So in this case, the test failed. Try another test. So sometimes, uh, and again, back to rule one last time, uh, if the limit of the sequence, if the terms of the sequence are approaching anything other than 0, you can show that the series diverges. But if the terms of the sequence are approaching 0, you cannot claim that it converges. The best you can do is say, well, the test failed. I'll try another test. So that's a quick look at the nth term test for derivative and it's, or for divergence. And it's mainly used just as a quick test before you start anything else. It's always a nice quick test uh, to run. And if you can show that it diverges, for a lot of problems, you'll be done. You don't have to uh, worry with a convergence test after that.